Over the past few years, GPS interference has grown from a minor annoyance to a major issue for commercial aviation. Whether it's jamming, which blocks receivers and renders GPS unavailable, or spoofing, which actually makes the aircraft believe it is somewhere it isn't, pilots now have to be aware of the possibility that their instruments could be wrong. Because of the rise in GPS interference, Flight Radar 24 has developed a map to show where aircraft are experiencing GPS jamming. Data from the previous six hours and previous day is available for playback to see how GPS interference is changing over time. We use the navigation integrity category values broadcast by each aircraft to measure interference in a specific area. GPS spoofing happens when someone broadcasts a signal on the same frequency as GPS, confusing the real signal with bad data. This can result in aircraft broadcasting an incorrect position via ADS-B, like this flight that appears to hover over Beirut. GPS jamming is the more common type of interference, where a signal is broadcast that overpowers the GPS signal and renders it unusable. That's what happened when we joined the crew of an SAS A350 on the flight deck from Copenhagen to Bangkok recently. Not long into the flight, we began to experience jamming as GPS GPS reliance systems went offline. This became especially pronounced over the Black Sea. Here, the pilots walk us through how they respond when flying through GPS interference. And you'll see later on when we come close to Ukraine, a lot of our systems will fall out and they'll just, you know, uh, we still have the uh, inertial reference system that helps us, but the GPSs, they, they disappear. We have some procedures that we can use. The things that go offline will be the GPS, and then the time will perhaps be wrong. And the, the worst thing about this is the spoofing. So uh, because of the jamming, the airplane may think it's it's a different place than where it is. Right. So, and then it'll, it could give us some uh, failures that we have to handle. Basically, it could tell us that we're flying into a mountain at this altitude, which is not logical, but it, it's, it, it has happened. Wow. And we're trained to avoid, so we have certain procedures that are instinct, but we have to brief each other that it's not logical, it's not happening, so we, we just omit the, uh, the the procedure that we used to do. Is that every time? When you every pass time, the yeah. That also happens in the northern part of uh, Norway. And actually, sometimes going close to Kaliningrad. This one is now offline. And the other one is struggling. But it's gonna disappear as well. As we begin to feel the effects of the GPS jamming, we'll see the affected systems show up on this list in orange. First to go is the RNP, or Required Navigation Performance. Well, it's not that important because we're not allowed to on this aircraft. We don't use that system. But now, this is just the first one of them. And there's gonna be more now. What we'll probably do in a short while, we'll switch off two systems. And then uh, continue with what we have. And the navigation is still super precise. It's not a problem. It's only a problem if you are going to land somewhere. You cannot use those systems. So yeah. you cannot do GPS approaches. For en route navigation, it's not a problem. We use this system, right? The IRS, the inertial reference system, this one. That's super reliable. It's what we used to have before GPS. GPS is just extra, but it will disappear. And you can see now the Black Sea here. Yeah. And Ukraine is up here, Crimea. So we're just a beam it now. Turning off the terrain a warning system just because of now we got so many of these jamming uh, problems that we want to be sure that we don't get this terrain warning starting to scream in the middle of the night. It's uh, really annoying. Like now we not have no satellites at all. All the satellites are gone. So when we see that the satellites are coming back and then we can turn it back on again. Okay. Off confirm. Yeah. But uh, the aircraft is still very good at the, the keeping, of course, uh, the position. So we're, we're still very high on accuracy on, on navigation without the satellite. The time is wrong. I just came to ask for a time check. <laughs> I'm going to scan the name 973. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, could you just uh, provide us with a time check? 
0126, copy. Scanner man 973, thanks. 0126. Yeah, see, so As you can see, now the time is 1.30. So even the jamming now makes the clock go be uh, Vi kan ändra den, va? Nej, det är check out. 0.26. Det är samma som är på iPaden. Ja, yeah. yeah, precis. Jag såg det också. It's approach capability downgraded. Clear and auto front. Clear auto front. Nav Genesis 1 Fold once again. Clear Nav. Clear Nav. Du får svanna ner när den får svanna kom tillbaka igen. Remove status. Remove status. Information complete. Clear Nav Genesis 1 Fold. Clear Nav Genesis 1 Fold. Clear Nav Genesis 1 Fold. Clear Nav I was sitting here one day and I, I saw the clock going backwards and um, I can understand that it makes sense if you, if you shoot a missile or, a, or a kind of these drones and it's whatever system they have for navigation that you count on the time and the speed when to hit somewhere and the, and the clock is not right then I can understand that you will miss your target. And now it's also for the passengers. They will, they have probably lost their internet now due to that, the, the fact that the system doesn't know where we are. And to be able to have that system in, in progress, you have to know, all the systems have to know where are we, which country are we flying over. I don't really know how they kind of adjust their jamming, but uh, it's not like it's fixed positions where it starts, where it ends, absolutely not. It's kind of floating from and the difference every time.